Hey everybody. So, I've got my test results back. We're going to take a look at them, see what things were light on, things were heavy on, and get a plan. So, let's go. Alright, so let's look at the pH from last year to this. That's one of the first things that we always look at. My pH last year was at 7.35 and my pH this year was at 7.52. Definitely not in the direction that I want it to go. I would rather see it at 6.9. I'm going to have to get some um, items to help get it dropped try to work it down and it's not going to be an overnight thing. I'm to be able to get it to 6.9. I'm looking at not just this year but probably 2 to 3 years, but if I can get it to start trending down, I'll be happy with that. Um, my nitrogen this year compared to last, last year I was at 2.62 and my nitrogen was just a bare minimum up at 2.76. My phosphorus was up this year at 8.85 in comparison to last year at 3.87. Now a lot of that could be is that I used Melorganite last year on my yard. Don't know that I'm going to use it this year, but we'll uh, we'll see. I'm not going to completely rule it out because I do like the slow release organic, but I don't like the phosphorus that is naturally in the soil that may release it as as I go along, and I, I don't want my phosphorus levels jumping up too high. Um, my potassium levels went from 4.93 to a 10.58. The potassium is still low in, in comparison of where I need it to be, but it did go up quite a bit from last year. Now one thing that did go from a, from a high level last year to a optimal level this year was my sulfur content. Now my sulfur content went from a 22.81 to a 9.89 so that's great I've, I've got it right in that range I want to be able to keep it there if I go up just a little bit and I put some product down that has got a little bit of sulfur in it it's not gonna kill it but I want to make sure that I want to stay within that optimal range I don't know that I'll ever get everything in that optimal range like a straight bar across there's always gonna be ups and downs but when you see those ups and downs basically what that says is that your yard is alive there's a lot of things that cause it to go up, cause it to go down, and as long as you can help maintain in those healthy areas, you'll be just fine. Now, my calcium levels, let's talk about that. My calcium levels went from a 599.69 to 1,087. So I came close to doubling my calcium levels. Now, on everything that I've read, I don't need to get too worried about that because from what I understand calcium is, is the what helps transport the nutrients into the through the roots and into the plant. Um, as far as it being anything that I need to really worry about, well, too much of anything is never good. But uh, I'm going to have to do some more reading to make sure that I'm correct on saying that that too much will actually come down and I'll be alright. So I'd imagine then, a lot of these nutrients that are down below the ground are being brought up and they're starting to leach their way towards the uh, surface because everything in my area, this area that I live in now, used to be at the bottom of an ancient lake called Lake Bonneville. And I'm actually about a mile and a half to two miles away from the shores of the Great Salt Lake. And because of that, I have clay like I can't tell you. I get from that I get compaction issues and I really have to work it hard, the soil hard to make sure that I'm keeping it from having further compaction issues. I am going to try to use aerate this year. I do mechanically aerate, but it's a constant battle to keep that compaction from impacting my lawn. And it's, it's just a never ending struggle. So now that we've gone through our soil tests and we're working on progression here, and so these are the second things second or the next things next, however you want to say it. These are the items that I focus on in getting things progressed. Now I've already done a video on dethatching uh, when I did the comparison of the two uh, Sunjo dethatchers, the 805E versus the old model, the 801E. And by the way, if you still want to uh, enter to win that on the giveaway, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment in that video, 
and we'll be picking winners from that video when we hit 2,000 subscribers. Now some of these second things second after the soil test are just things that I do to make sure that I start to raise the level clear across and a lot of it is just pure maintenance. For me that's what second thing second is. So number one I'm going to take all those old dead grass clippings and and also the dead debris that I pulled from my dethatching and get it tilled into my grass. Okay, done. All together, four passes, took about 30 minutes, and then just a little cleanup. I did go over it with a bow rake and do a very, very rough level, just so I didn't have all those dips and ducks. But I am going to go over it again. I'm gonna allow this to sit, and then right before I get ready to plant any of the garden, I'm gonna throw down a little bit of that Humate that I use in the, in the lawn, because it's a garden and soil conditioner. I always like to put a bag down in the yard or in the garden. Just helps things out, makes it gets it to that level that I want at. And I've always had great results in my lawn. But as you can see, all that is getting turned under. I probably turned under probably 75 to 80 percent of it. I'm gonna let it sit for a couple of days, and then I'll mulch it in again. be honest here I love driving it it is so choice if you have the means I highly recommend picking one up thank you yes sir Mint. okay so one of the things that I make sure I do every year is I always make sure that I go and I sweep out my gutters because as you can see I live on a fairly busy road it's not a main thoroughfare but it gets plenty of traffic especially because of this Got the high school across the street. Looks like they got some lacrosse going on out in the far distance. But uh, this is what the result is. Uh, whenever we get rain or snow, well, we get snow and then it piles up on the side of the road and then starts to find its way. The problem is that when the kids come and park the cars along here for the school, it starts to jump and throw a little bit of rocks into the, into the grass and then therefore it does cause a little havoc in, on the lawnmower. So we're going to get this all swept up just because I'm aiming like that. 11 minutes later. Okay, so we're done. Got this swept into piles. Just a rough sweep. Get it cleaned up. So every year I always come out and I spray this little rock bed that's off to the side of the RV pad um, or should I say the uh, used car lot in my house for my kids. Um, I usually always spray this. I do have a little bit of uh, glyphosate um, left over aka Roundup and uh, we're going to spray that down and then I'll mix up another batch because as you can see I get a lot of weeds in the cracks of the and then there's going to be weeds that start popping up in the seams of this and that's just something I can't stand I just don't like it something that uh, has always bugged me last year I did a video on let if you let weeds go and what it look like and I did mention in there that I never allow my weeds to get bad that's about as crazy it's ever gonna get from this point forward on that video I actually let them grow quite large and then I killed them but uh, yeah, that was that video. This is now.
So I wanted to talk about a couple things. Normally I would have been doing a video about my very first fertilization because that would be one of the second things that I would do. But the problem is that I live in the second driest state in the Union. If you've watched some of my other videos talking about watering and whatnot, I'm big on watering efficiently and effectively. Now, that being said, we just got some news here a few days ago that the water, the secondary water in my city is not going to be turned on until May 1st. And they told us the day before the water was supposed to be turned on that they'd made that decision. Now, I don't mean to wax Marvel on anybody, but that sounds a little bit like I need to quote quick Quicksilver and say, you didn't see that coming? You didn't see that coming? We know that we've been in a drought. The snowpack has been sitting at 63 to 68% all through this winter and into the spring. We didn't see this coming. Why didn't we let everybody know? And so it's kind of uh, jacked up my plans for the next few weeks until we actually get water going on. And uh, so right now, the grass is starting to stress. And I don't know that it's gonna fully go as long as I'd like it to, but I don't like seeing it quite stressed like that. And yes, like I've said before, your grass is very resilient. It will come back. This is not the world's biggest deal by any means, but as a lawn care enthusiast, I just like to know when I'm getting my water on so that I can plant effectively. So I may throw just a little bit of water down on this couple of dry spat spots and make sure that it's at least a little bit green. This one's probably the most stressed area in my entire yard. This one, not so bad. Reason being is, is if you see that drain right there, it comes off this corner of the house. When we have gotten any rain, this will come up flood this entire area and keep it fairly soaked. Now we did get rain two or three days ago. It hasn't been enough to help that dry spot out because it was very little rain. So that being said, I'm gonna have to make some adjustments for this year. I'm actually supposed to be talking to Jimmy Lewis a little bit about it on his podcast. Um, look forward to that, but uh, definitely having to alter some things. We are within a drought, no doubt about it. I have absolutely no problems with with conserving things but i think education is the n number one key versus just cutting and and slicing on uh, when we're able to use water because otherwise it'll just get wasted when it comes to uh people who aren't educated or who just out of straight out apathy just don't care and so i knew so, it was coming okay. but they should have been a little bit more communicative and made that decision a week in advance that being said overall they've cut us completely back not only is it going to be pushed back two weeks in the spring but it's going to be brought forward two weeks in the fall so we lose an entire month of watering if you're watering effectively and efficiently it shouldn't be that big a deal but people when you cut them off like that they will find ways to make it happen a lot of people are going to end up turning on their culinary systems and from their hose and i don't know that that's conserving water i think that it's actually wasting water as a whole. I understand if you've got some dry spots like I've got, okay, throw a little water on it, make sure it's it's limping it through until you're able to get some uh, decent water down. But I've got Jeremy of the Greener Lawn to the south of me. I think that he's got full water. I've got my sister-in-law to the north of me, about two miles away. They've had water since April 1st. So it's a little bit of a frustration, but Again, your lawn and your grass is resilient. It will come back. This is just a little bump in the road, but if you water effectively and proper education is done, I think that we'll get through these kind of drought phases together. We won't see the problems that we're seeing out there, but a lot of our problem right now is just straight up apathy. People just don't care. They'll waste water wherever they want to. So all together, the entire thing that you just saw me do took me about an hour and a half total with the um, mulching everything in, through the sweeping of the gutter, through the spraying of the weeds and the window wells. Might have to do a few touch-ups here and there, but overall, it's just those little things that help get you ready and prepared for the season. Love it, doesn't take a lot of time, but it makes a lot of difference in the end. Hey, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button.
and hit that notification bell for any notifications on any future videos being posted. Also, like, share with your friends, and please comment down below. It really helps. And we'll see you in the next one.